Hello from my side to this today lecture. I'm Helena Gerner. I'm a PhD student at the University of Bonn at the Institute of Geodesy and Geoinformation and I'm working for the Globe Drought Project. The lecture today is about meteorological droughts in the context of globe drought and I want to give you a short overview of different indicators and tools for characterizing, assessing and monitoring meteorological droughts. The objectives of this lecture are that we want to first give you an overview of the Globe Drought Project and the meteorological droughts context to it. Then we want to give you an introduction to terms and definitions. The first term is drought hazard, um, which is just a short reminder because it was introduced in the first e-lecture. Then we will talk about the items meteorological drought and about drought indicators. And the last point is that we want to give you some examples from meteorological drought indicators, uh, which are, for example, percentiles. We then have the standardized precipitation index, SPI, and the standardized precipitation evapotranspiration index, SPEI. So now let's come to the Globe Drought project. The general aim of the project is that we develop a web-based drought information system this project is funded by BMBF, which is the German Federal Ministry for Education and Research. And we aim to compute drought risk in this project by considering the components hazard, exposure and vulnerability of drought. And therefore we use different remote sensing data products and model outputs for analyzing the drought types. Detailed information about the project you can find in the first webinar and lecture, which was held by Stefan Siebert and Michael Hagenlocher. Our work at the Institute of Geodesy and Geoinformation for Globe Drought is now that we look at the component drought hazard, which is uh, given here in green. We, so we look at drought hazard indicators for meteorological, but also for grace-based hydrological droughts. GRACE is a satellite mission that delivers gravity changes and from this gravity changes, we can compute total water storage changes. So we look at the vertical sum of water storages and can then look at the hydrological cycle. The meteorological indicators which are used in this globe drought project are used to describe rain fed agricultural systems. There are other systems that we want to describe, that, but they are not dealing with meteorological indicators. And uh, we then try to uh, find a combined product of the different hazard indicators to combine it to a merged hazard index. All analysis is made on a global but also on a regional level um, for the study areas of South Africa, Zimbabwe, Maharashtra, which is a state in West India, Ceara, which is a state in East Brazil, and the Missouri River Basin. So now I would like to get to the hazard uh, definition. This is just a short reminder because we had this definition already in the first lecture. So hazard is the potential of occurrence of a natural or human induced physical event. So the hazard we are looking here is drought, uh, but drought is not only drought as itself, we have different types of drought. The types are meteorological drought, hydrological drought, agricultural drought, which we also call soil moisture drought in this project, and we have socioeconomic drought. All these drought types are explained in this figure, but uh, we want to concentrate on the upper part of the figure, so on our meteorological drought. Meteorological drought is mostly described by a precipitation deficiency, but also by other factors. For example, we have an increasing temperature which results in increasing evapotranspiration. So we in general want to describe the degree of dryness on a specific location. Um, this are we doing by comparing our actual values to the defined normal. And the normal can change uh, from region to region because when we look at a tropical region we have a different normal compared to a desert. So now we want to describe our meteorological drought and we are doing this with help of drought indicators. Drought indicators are there to characterize, monitor and trigger management plans and decisions for droughts. And they help us in describing severity, location, timing and duration of a drought. As I already told you, they are defined to the normal condition. 
And often the indicators are based on threshold percentiles or standardization methods. But there are a lot of more methods and uh, I just show you here one example of some indicators. This is just a list of few indicators, but there exist multiple indicators for metrological drought. So to give now some examples of meteorological indicators, I first want to introduce you to the data sets that we use. Um, the first data set is uh, precipitation, which you can see in the figure here on the global level. Uh, on the equator you have, for example, more precipitation than uh, compared to the northern part in Africa. And this data set is provided by our project partners at University of Frankfurt. And uh, they also homogenized this data set, uh, which is called the WFD, WFDEI. Then we see here a time series of precipitation. Each year you can see a high peak, so high precipitation values. But you can already see that some peaks are lower than others, for example in 2004 or 2015 and 16. So we already can see here that um, maybe we have some drier years here. But to have a more detailed look, I introduce now the indicators. So the first examples are percentiles. The percentiles are computed from precipitation by choosing a month, for example January, and then we take all January precipitation values from the times used for each year. We rank them from lowest to highest, and then we divide the actual rank by the number of all January values. This is then multiplied by 100 and so we get a percentage value out of it. Here you can see some results for a percentiles indicator in South Africa. The percentiles are ranking from 0 to 100 and 0 to 2, for example, means that we have an exceptional drought. Exceptional Drought is not the only class of drought severity. We have other classes up to abnormal drought, but values higher than 30% are declared as wet. And you can see that we can separate uh, indicator values into classes. So this is a great advantage that we have by using this method. But you can also see that the indicator is very noisy. So making a clear analysis of drought Duration, draw timing is not very easily here. Uh, advantages and disadvantages about this indicator but also on the other indicators are detailed discussed in the webinar. So the next indicator is the Standardized Precipitation Index, SPI, uh, from McKee et al. 1993. And the indicator also uses precipitation as input but it can also use accumulated precipitation. Accumulated precipitation means that you look at a specific time step of the time series and then take the three time steps, for example, previously and accumulate it to one value. And this are you doing for each time step. Then you again have this accumulated time series as a result and take the all January values. Um, then you fit a gamma distribution for these values and the gamma distribution then tells us how often a value appears. So it also gives us the probability of a specific precipitation value. So we now take our precipitation value and search it in the distribution function. We get out a probability value. This probability value is then transformed to a normal distribution value. And this is now our uh, resulting value and so we get our indicator. Here are the results for the SPI in South Africa. So you see here that we have SPI 6, so we used six months accumulated precipitation. The values are ranking from about minus 2 to 2. You see that we have again severity classes as with a percentile indicator, but these classes are a little bit different, so they have a different range. And uh, what you can see is that this indicator is not as noisy as the percentiles indicator. So we can now better extract some temporal drought events and 
the duration of drought events. For example, in 2004 we have a low peak or in 2016 we have a drier period. As next step, I would like to introduce another data set to you. So this is the temperature data set. The temperature helps us to compute potential evapotranspiration. This data set is also provided by our project partners at University of Frankfurt. And this data set is then used to compute the standardized precipitation evapotranspiration index, the SPEI. Um, the index uses the same methods as SPI, but with other input data sets. So the input data set is here precipitation minus potential evapotranspiration. And we get the potential evapotranspiration by computing Thornthwaite method with help of our temperature data. Then we have another difference to the SPI method. So now the distribution function is not a gamma distribution anymore. We have then the log logistic distribution. So and you see here some results. We have again values from about minus two to two with severity classes as with the SPI. And what you also can see is that it is not very different to SPI for South Africa. For other regions this might um, be different because evapotranspiration here has no influence but for other regions it would have an influence. So I would like to come to the end of this lecture now. I would like to remind you that we have a follow-up webinar and lecture, so, which is about hydrological droughts. Um, they, there, our project partners of University of Frankfurt give an overview of different indicators and tools for characterizing, assessing and monitoring hydrological drought. And I would also like to remind you about the webinar according to this lecture and this topic. There you can find more information about meteorological droughts. And I would like to invite you to the discussion forum, which is now open for sharing discussions, questions or experiences. And with these words, I would like to say goodbye.